Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from T and J, and we're sitting here at 37 and 35. If you look at our last about two, three weeks, we're kind of even here. I mean, we won two out of three with the Dodgers, won one out of three with the Giants, one out of or no, two out of four actually. Sorry. Then we swept the Diamondbacks. And then we got swept by the Cardinals. And we won two out of three with the Padres. So we're sitting here at 37 and 35. Let's just look at the standings here. So we're still second in the division. And luckily, look, we're third in the wild card. So the Diamondbacks are actually ahead of us. They're the surprise team of this season so far. Um, the Giants are they're expected to be there um, but look at the Mets the Mets aren't even close right now that's the team that's surprising 31 and 38 I mean they got a lot of ground to make up there's seven games under 500 so they need a lot of people to lose in order to jump up to these spots um, so you know we're actually struggling at the plate as well we look at team rankings here uh, this doesn't really show team rankings hmm let's see player statistics but as a whole basically we're not even we're towards the bottom of the NL I think we're 14th in batting average in the NL let's just look at some of our guys so VR is hitting 269 which is pretty decent but then look Travis Shaw 232 Keon Broxton 208 RC at 267 he's hitting good too like VR Domingo 262 who's hitting all right Hernan Perez doesn't play enough but he's still hitting 256 which isn't bad but Kurt Suzuki 259 Trace Thompson 284 Lewis Brinson 210 Eric Thames 243 Jet Bandy 216 and Braun doesn't play enough but he's hitting 313 so we're not hitting that well we're not driving in runs like we should uh let's just look at the top prospects here now that it's a little updated through almost half the season josh hatter is now the 11th ranked prospect in baseball yoan mankata is still first is he he's still at the triple a level which is surprising but anyway let's just look to see if we got anybody else and i doubt we do because we had brinson the beginning of the season he's no longer a prospect okay we have Corey Ray still he's in double A he's been hurt though he got hurt around the same time as Braun so he's out two three more weeks just like Braun is let's see let's see how far Braun is off um so he's got one to two weeks left um as far as his fracture wrist four more days on the DL uh Domingo Santana actually got hurt too so he's nine days on the DL so when they both get back, we're going to have a crowded outfield. Uh, somebody's going to have to get sent to AAA. I'm excited, though, to see Brenton, Braun, Thames, all these guys in the lineup at the same time because we need some offense bad. But we're going against the Pittsburgh Pirates here at home at Miller Park. Uh, let's just see if I can start somebody other than Chase Anderson. Because he's kind of tired a little bit. Um, you know what? We're going to go with Chase Anderson, though. On the mound for the Brewers. Let's get into the gameplay. We're going to try to just jump a spot to the NL wild card. I know it's like a little over halfway through the season. Well, no, not even close. Well, close to the halfway point. So... The All-Star game hasn't happened yet, but I don't know if we'll have any All-Stars. If you look at our lineup, I don't think we'll have any All-Stars. So maybe Junior Guerrero will make it because he is currently, let's see, he's 5-2 with a 2.08 ERA. So he's doing pretty well. He might be the only one. Neftali Feliz might make it too just because he has like 20 saves on the season. Let's see how many saves he has. He has 24 saves on the season. So this is obviously his best year of his career at 28 years old from the Dominican he's he's looking to make his first all-star game but nobody else really 
So let's just get into this gameplay. We're going against the Pirates. Let's try to pull out a win here. Here at Miller Park, the roof might be open because it's the middle of what month is it? It's the middle of what? It's the middle of June. So let's just get into this. See you there. What's funny about this game is that when I went to go start it, Chase Anderson actually was sick with the flu, so he missed the game. So I put Taylor Youngman into pitch to fill in for him. And he's not doing bad, but he gives up a hit up the middle in the first inning. And they got guys on first and second. The only reason I don't have Taylor Youngman in the starting rotation is because sometimes it just seems like he gives up way too many big hits. So I'm here and I'm in the bottom of the first inning and Lewis Brinson gets a nice base hit up the middle. Eric Thames moves to second. So we got guys on first and second with two outs and Trace Thompson pops it up to the first baseman. So we can't get anything done early in the game. But up for the Pirates, Andrew McCutcheon in the third inning and he grounds out. This is a man who, honestly, like, I like Andrew McCutcheon, and I was thinking about trading for him, but here in the fifth, the Pirates get on the board, and they are going to take a 2-0 lead, and here I'm in the bottom of the fifth, and my pitcher comes up to bat, so I'm going to bring in Hernan Perez. He's going to come on the pinch hit, and he's going to get a nice hit down the right field line. And he's got 86 speed, so he's getting in the second easily. So we're, we got guys in scoring position to start off the fifth with two outs. And Jonathan VR pops on the right field. Andrew McCutcheon comes in, and he cannot make the catch. So we got to run in to cut the lead to 2-1. to one. Eric Thames is up next, and he gets one down the middle. And he takes it deep to left, and just like in real life, he is so good at those opposite field home runs. He hits one over the left field fence, and that's his sixth homer of the year, and the Brewers take the 3-2 lead. And the newly acquired Jose Abreu gets a nice hit up the middle. So they got a guy on in the sixth, and what do you know? We give up a home run to left field. See what I mean? He gives up home runs at the weirdest times. He gives up too many. But the next inning, Lewis Brinson, he's a beast versus left-handers. He gets one right down the middle, and he takes it deep. Lewis Brinson Versus left-handers, he is so great, and he struggles versus right-handers. That's the only thing. And it's nice to see him in the lineup and nice to see him getting a hold of pitches because, man, for the longest times, it's hard, so hard to get hit hits with him. So it's nice to see him follow through. But here we have Corey Knable in the pitch, and he's giving up a walk in the seventh. And John Jaso comes up and hits a liner to right field. This one bounces off the wall. We get it to the cutoff, man, and get a throw home. And the runner holds at third. So Andrew McCutcheon comes up, and our catcher bobbles the throw, and the runner advances to second. So Corey Knable throws one down the middle for Andrew McCutcheon, and McCutcheon hits one to right field. He drives in a run, and he's on for a single. But at least we get the next batter, Austin Meadows, to strike out. And Jose Abreu comes up next. And the diving stop by Hernan Perez. He throws a second, throws the first for a double play. And luckily we get out of there. Eric Thames comes up in the eighth and cannot get a hit here. He lines out to center. But Travis Shaw gets a nice hit to right field. So at least we got a runner on here in the eighth. We need to make a little rally here. We're down one. And Lewis Brinson comes up. He homered before, and he's facing a left-handed pitcher. Oh, and he turns another one around here. And his fine ball game will continue. Give him another home run. Lewis Brinson delivers once again. He is hot at the plate. 
versus left-handed pitchers it seems like he is just dialed in like I said he has that 90s power 90s contact versus left-handed pitchers so he's not gonna miss especially when it's over the middle and we are on to the ninth inning here and Lewis Brinson brings his glove this time and he gets to a pop fly and left down the line but Neftali Feliz is on for the save, and it seems like every time he comes in for the save, he always gives up a couple of big hits. And they got a guy on second, and Andrew McCutcheon comes up in the clutch with a ground ball that gets through the left side of the infield, and the runner is in to score, so they tie the game up in the ninth. But we get a chance in the bottom of the ninth, and Jet Banny just hits one off the top of the wall. It's just a couple feet from a walk-off. And we have a guy on second with Jonathan VR coming up for the game-winning at-bat, but he gets walked. So next up, Eric Thames, the man himself, has a chance to win this game. And they try to pick off VR at first, and they overthrow the first baseman. So now all he needs is a hit, and it wins it. And Eric Thames hits a ground ball to the right side. The second baseman can't handle it, but he gathers himself and throws out Eric Thames. So we're on to extras here in the 10th inning. And Travis Shaw gets a walk, and he gets on first. So Lewis Brinson comes up versus another left-hander, and he gets a pitch, but that's way inside, and he swings at one. Pops up to second base. So Trace Thompson comes up next. And he hits one over the second baseman this time. Andrew McCutcheon feels the ball. Comes up throwing. But Travis Shaw slides into third. So we have our game winning run on third. And Kurt Suzuki comes up. And pops one to center. And I tag up. But it's just not deep enough. So I need to get back to third. And next up. Key on Broxton cannot come through in the clutch and the Brewers cannot take the lead but the Pirates come up with a double here in the 13th inning and Andrew McCutcheon comes up next and we're walking him here because we know he's hot so next up Austin Meadows he's been 0 for 5 with three strikeouts but this time he comes up clutch and hits one down the right field line and he brings in two on this one and he's on the third base and look at this blunder so I have a ground ball to the pitcher look at my catcher he totally ignores the runner coming home I don't know what he was doing he could have just tagged him and that would have ended the inning but it doesn't matter anyway because the Brewers are going to get up to bat and Keon Broxton is going to strike out and we're down to our last out, and Arcia cannot get it done. He hits a grounder to the right side, and the second baseman comes up throwing. The Brewers cannot get away with a divisional win, but hit subscribe, and we're going to try to bounce back next game. We got a doubleheader versus the Marlins, so stay tuned.